this video is a follow-up to one that I made earlier about getting some free machines when I made a purchase on eBay and went to collect it. This video is about the machine that I actually did make my bid on and did pay my money for. It looked quite promising in the listing and hopefully it's going to have some exciting stuff inside. So let's take a look. Hiya. Today we're going to be looking at this funky machine. This was the final machine of a lot of four that I got. I covered the other three on an earlier video. And this machine is simply was listed as being based around the AMD K6 3D processor, which I believe was the first one to use the 3D Now instruction set. So let's take a look. So there's not much of interest on the front here. We've got an out of place black optical drive. We've got a floppy drive. We've got a missing 1.44 inch drive bay blank and just some buttons. If we spin it around on the back, it's a bit more interesting. We've got our power supply, an IO panel that has PS2 for mouse and keyboard, two USB, two serial, one parallel. There's no onboard sound or graphics here, but we do have some cards. We've got what looks like a VGA card, a sound card, a modem, and that's about it. Let's whip the lid off and see if there's anything exciting within. Okay, so once inside we can see our cards. First one out is some modem card based on a Lucent chipset. This we won't be using and it won't be going back into the machine. Next out we've got the sound card. So this one is branded a creative sound card. Model number is ES1371. So this is kind of before they started assigning the CT numbers that we're all familiar with to cards that were purchased when they took over Ensonique. So these cards, as far as I'm aware, I haven't actually used one. They're sort of bog standard PCI sound cards that have DOS drivers, but apparently their FM synthesis is rubbish, so probably won't be using this. And the graphics card is our ATI Rage 2C. So that's Rage 2 3D. I think you have to take that 3D with a pinch of salt. It's not a great sort of card I would, as a companion to something like a 3D FX maybe, but nothing to write home about. Probably won't be using this either. Get these ribbon cables out of the way and remove the drives. And the first one out is a CD-ROM drive from light on. It's a shame it's black. It doesn't match the case, so this will have to go into the parts bin as well. And while I was getting the drives out, I found a case badge, which should have been stuck to the front, but for some reason it was inside the case. So hill, and then there's a picture of a hill with a cross on top. So I wonder if that's a clue to this computer's previous owner. We've got a floppy disk drive from Mitsumi. And then we get the hard drive out, and it's a Seagate Metalist 8641. I can't remember, but I think the guy said this was an 8 gigabyte drive. Case is all nice and clear now, so we can get the motherboard out, and this one's nice and conveniently mounted on a tray as well, so we can just pop that out the back. And last but not least, we've got our PSU. So we've got a Sparkle power supply and it's a 235 watt unit. When I saw the listing for this, it said K6 3D and that was, I believe, the first AMD K6 chip to require the 100 megahertz front side bus to run it and that led also led me to believe that this was a super socket 7 based system i was looking at so i was particularly pleased to get it for the price that i did and i don't have a super socket 7 system currently running i do have another mo motherboard somewhere but i've not got around to building anything around it yet so this is indeed a tmc ti5 vg plus motherboard and it has the 100 megahertz front side bus it goes up to a clock multiplier 4.5 has all the various voltage settings for the io and core voltages that you need to run this kind of chip it's got one agp slot five pci slots and two isa slots and it also has 
two different kinds of memory, so you can use either DIMMs or SIMs, SDRAM, FPM, or EDO. There's quite a lot of uh, info kicking around on this motherboard, so I've got the manual, I've got the jumper settings, and I was reading a few reviews that are still kicking around on sites like Anantech, and it seems like it was a fairly highly regarded board at the time. It has 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. I think some later boards came out with a megabyte, but I think for the 512 um, boards, this was regarded as one of the best at the time. And so much for K6 3D. I don't know if you can see that. This is a K6 2 350. This motherboard isn't too dirty, so just the usual a quick brush down with the anti stack brush and a bit of a wipe with some IPA, I think will do the trick. And I, I kind of in the back of my mind that when I bought that other Super Socket 7 board, that I had some processors to go with it. So I went and had a little dig around in my processor box, and sure enough, I have. Unfortunately, it's not much of a an advance over the existing K6 to 350 that's in the machine, but I do have a K6 400, so I'll probably end up using this one. But what I might do is a little comparison just to see just how much difference there is between the two. Put this nice clean motherboard back onto its tray and pop the original processor back in. I'm not really sure about it. Uh, thermal paste in this kind of chip because it's, I guess it's kind of full metal backs, kind of heat spreader in its own right, but it can't do any harm to stick some on there. I also got this uh, other Socket 7 CPU cooler that I'm just going to stick on here for now because the other one is filthy and it's quite tall and it's got lots of nooks and crannies, so I'm going to take that downstairs and give it a good wash in the sink. In the meantime, I'm just going to stick this one on here for now. I've got the PSU back in the case we gave that a bit of a dusting cleaned up the fan and what have you and now the motherboard drive tray can go back into position as well we popped the original 64 megabytes back on there just for now there's a couple of uh, empty dim sockets so i'll probably be sticking a bit of extra memory in there before the end of the build Motherboard's in place, PSU's in place, now we can get the drives back in. So I'm not going to put that horrible black light on CD-ROM drive back in here, but for anybody who watched the previous video where I looked at the three freebies that I got alongside this machine, one of them had a rather nice creative six times DVD-ROM drive in there, so that is going to go into this machine and I'll just keep the original floppy and the original hard drive. So now for graphics card, we're not going to put that Rage 2 back in here. We're going to put this, not so much of an eBay bargain as the machine, but I've always wanted a Voodoo 3, so it's a STB Voodoo 3 2016 megabytes, which I think will be a good match for this machine. And likewise, for sound cards, we're not going to put back that average creative Ensonic based card. We're going to use this, an OR64. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while, not really knowing what to do with it. So I think that'll be a good match for this machine also. Now time to address some issues on the front panel of this machine. So I knew I had to fill in the gaping hole where there was a missing blank for the three and a quarter inch drive bay below the floppy and I, I went through my bag of those and didn't have one that fitted very well i did have one that kind of fitted but it rattled around and it just didn't fasten correctly so i need to come up with some kind of solution for that i suppose i could have stuck a drive in there second drive i do have some other sort of optical drives that i've been meaning to mess about with kind of ls120 type things but not ls120s just to, to have a bit of a play and that would have filled in the space but I'm going to try and secure the the loose drive bay blank in there and while I was looking at this I noticed something that I hadn't noticed before there's a crack in the fascia of this case so I'm gonna to have to deal with that also 
So after thinking about it for a while, I decided that I would stick some epoxy behind the crack to secure that and hopefully stop it wobbling around and getting worse. And I would just use some hot glue to secure that drive bay blank in place because hot glue is pretty flimsy stuff. So if I ever needed to pop it out, should I want to put another drive in there, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Fast forward 24 hours, glues have set and everything feels kind of a bit more solid. So I'm quite pleased with that. And that means we can get the fascia back on and it's starting to look like something. So pretty pleased with the way this is looking so far. Okay, I think we're at a point now where we can fire it up. Uh, I know it's going to work because the guy demonstrated it to me when I went to collect it. So let's have a little nosy around the hard drive and see what's on there. Uh, it all becomes clear, that case badge with the hill and the cross. It looks like this was once the computer that lived in a church. And there's lots of stuff on here. Sermons, organisational things for various Christian festivals, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Life is a pilgrimage. We are all people on the move, bound for our homeland in heaven. I kind of feel a bit blasphemous now because now I'm going to wipe all this stuff off and go and do mindless fragging and jibbing and doom and quake and blowing people apart and shooting down aircraft and all of those good, wholesome and very unchristian things. So the usual thing, into FDisk, wipe the partitions, create new ones, and we're going to do an install of Windows 98 SE. And it always kind of makes me feel a bit sad when you wipe all of this kind of history and, and stuff off these machines. But I suppose it has to be done because it's personal information. And the alternative to not coming to somebody like me would perhaps have been for a machine like this to go to a breakers or into the scrapyard. So at least it's going to have a new lease of life, quite a different life from all of that pure and wholesome stuff that it's been dealing with for all these years. Now it's all just going to be blood and guts from now on in. I've got to say, the way that that hard drive clatters around, it doesn't exactly fill me with confidence for its longevity. It seems to pick the sound card up out of the box. Yeah, Windows 98 knows what an OR64 is, so that's cool. I'll get the drivers on for our Voodoo 3 2000, and that went pretty smoothly. And there we've got all of our 3D FX features to mess about with in our video properties. I wanted to do a bit of benchmarking just to see if we could detect a difference between the 350 and the 400 megahertz processors. So I tried to install firstly Final Reality and then 3D Mark 99, but had all sorts of problems. Neither one of these, they both installed okay, but neither one of these programs would start once they were installed. So a bit of Googling, I found out there were some issues with Windows 98 SE and indeed with MMX. So there were various patches on the internet and I tried those, which got me a little bit further, got me into the programs, but they still wouldn't run properly. Um, I don't know whether that was to do with the 3D Now instructions confusing it or whatever, so I decided to just go with some more basic benchmarking for that. So I just picked two of the Phil's Computer Lab's DOS benchmarking suite to, to do this on, because it's just going to be a 50 megahertz difference and the rest of the system's identical. So to start with, we are going to use Landmark System Speed Test of version 6, and that puts this processor kind of just above a Celeron 333 megahertz and above a Pentium 300 
so I don't know how accurate that is for these K6 chips, but K6-2, I guess that maybe sounds about right. And then on the Quake time demo, we've got a time of 49.2 seconds and a frame rate of 19.7 frames per second. Out with the old, in with the new. So we upgrade the 350 to the 400 using the documentation that I managed to locate online. And this motherboard uses dip switches, which is good. Apparently Super Socket 7 motherboards can be a bit of a nightmare configuring the jumpers. I guess that's because of all of the different voltage and um, front side bus combinations and all that kind of thing. So that's pretty simple according to this documentation. I just have to flick two extra dip switches to the on position and it should be good to go for the 400. And there it is in place. So let's see if it makes any difference at all. Landmark has noted that it is now a 400 megahertz and it has actually boosted it up. I don't know whether that just reads its clock speed or whatever, but it's pushed it up to a Pentium 2, just under a Pentium 2 400. So that's a little bit further on from where we were just above that Celeron 333. And the Quake Time demo has shown a bit of an improvement. So whereas the 350 came in at 49.2 seconds, the 400 comes in at 46.7 seconds. And the 350 had a frame rate of 19.7 frames per second. And the 400 has a frame rate of 20.8 frames a second. So that's a marginal increase. Obviously going up by 50 megahertz isn't the kind of thing, it's not the kind of upgrade that you go out to a shop to buy. But if somebody gave you one then fair enough but it's a little bit faster so that's cool last thing i'm going to do before i close the case up is stick another 64 megabyte stick of pc 100 ram in there so we'll have 128 megabytes in the machine altogether So for the final bits and pieces, we'll just get the case put back together again and then we can just give it a quick boot and make sure everything still works and also check that we've got our 128 megabytes of RAM now registered there, which we have. So that's all good to go. And like cracking a bottle of champagne over the bow of a newly launched ship, no new build is complete without a badge. So we're not going to put the the religious oriented hill badge back on here, striking me down with lightning. I'm going to put on a K62 badge, which is rather cool. And also what I found in my badge collection was something I didn't know I had. I've got an OR64 badge, which is just the right size to cover that crack or at least the most obvious parts of it so pop that on there and it looks pretty cool i think this has turned out to be a good buy and is a really nice system and i'm looking forward to having a bit of a mess about with it so to begin with we're gonna load up wing commander prophecy an fmv fest of a game i've not played this one all the way through so i'm looking forward to doing it on this machine we'll get that rolling and see what it looks like and see what it sounds like with the new gear that's in this machine hey i always wondered what happened to luke skywalker after star wars and there he is he went and fought the kill and for many of you this will be your first mission outside. Let's go, Play Patrol, form up! Don't start, maniac. Now that you scrubs have figured out how to get here, let's engage our autopilots and get on with it. Will you look at that? Mother of God. Looks like the cats had one hell of a party. <laughs> Too bad we missed it. Don't get floppy, kids. They could be anywhere. Good shot, Falk Leave. This machine is definitely the cherry on the cake of that 
set of four PCs that I got off eBay a couple of weeks ago for a really good bargain price and I'm really really pleased to have a nice little working Super Socket 7 system in my collection now and in future I might look to upgrading this to maybe a K63 or something like that should I be able to find one for reasonable money on eBay but in the meantime I'm very happy with what I've got it's got good graphics good sound and I guess a pretty nippy little processor for a socket 7 system so I'm gonna really enjoy playing through Wing Command Prophecy on this machine and that pretty much wraps it up for this video so I hope you enjoyed watching it and if you did it'd be great if you consider subscribing give me a thumbs up leaving a comment below or never watching again whatever you like anyway that's it for now I'm going to continue to play a little bit of Wing Commander Prophecy thanks very much for watching and I hope you'll join me again for the next video bye Thanks for the escort, ladies. 